This is the Favero Osseo Map Power Meter. And this is the Wahoo Power Link Zero Power Meter pedal. These are two power meter pedals with a similar pod design, yet they are very different. The Favero Osseoma is one of the most popular pedal based power meter out there. I have been using mine for years and they have been my go-to power meter when testing smart bike trainers for power accuracy. The Wahoo Power Link Zero power meter pedals are new. They are also pedal based and have been very solid in my testing. They have a similar pod design yet they are very different type of pedals. With both of these being excellent power meter options, it can be tough to decide which one you should go with. So in this video, I'm going to run you through the similarities and differences between these two pedal based power meters and hopefully help you decide which one is best for you. And if you find this video helpful, I would appreciate it if you hit the like button. It helps the channel and the video quite a bit and I really appreciate it. And also subscribe so you do not miss any videos from me in the future. Okay, so as you see, the Favero Asioma are clipless pedals. These type of pedals are the most common pedals you will see on road bikes. Uh, they are compatible with Favero specific cleats and look Kio cleats. They also have the Favero Asioma Duo Shi power meter spindles that can be quickly and easily installed into your current Shimano SPD pedal bodies. The Kio style pedals are usually weighted on the back so they always fold vertically to make it easier to clip into them. Some people find it difficult to clip into them at first but eventually you will get used to them and will become more natural. Wahoo Power Link Zero pedals are the first ever power meter to feature speed play compatibility. Speed play pedals look a lot like a lollipop and the main difference is you can clip on either side of the pedal instead of being limited to one side. And here's a little tidbit for you. The term clipless doesn't seem to make sense here since the way these pedals function is by clipping into your pedals. But they are called this because when they were first designed, manufacturers needed a term to differentiate between toe clip type pedals from these new type of pedals that use cleats to clip in instead of toe clips. So they call them clipless because they did not have the toe clip straps. Both pedals install like a normal pedal, pretty easy. All you need is an Allen key, so no special tools are needed and both can be easily swapped between bikes. The Favero Asioma pedals come with the Favero's red six degree float cleats. You can also use the original look Kio cleats if you would like, however, Unlike the speed play cleats, the float on the Lokio style cleats is fixed. If you want a different float, you will need to buy different cleats. The Wahoo Powerlink speed play pedals use their own cleats. Side to side and fore aft adjustments are fairly simple and easy to do. The float, which is the heel movement, can also be adjusted fairly easily by adjusting the screws on the side of the cleats. They are adjustable from zero to 15 degrees. The pod design is very similar on both pedals. This is where all the electronics are housed and both are very sturdy. The pod on the Asioma is a little bigger than the Wahoo's Powerlink pedals. The Q factor on the Powerlink is 55 millimeter where the Asioma Kio version is 54 millimeter. So one millimeter difference in Q factor between the two I doubt you'll even notice. This brings us to the weight of the pedals. The Asioma Power Meter pedals weigh 151.5 grams per pedal, where the Wahoo Power Link weigh 138 grams per pedal for all you weight weenies out there. Both pedals have rechargeable batteries and can easily be charged. The Favero Asioma uses these magnetic clips that just snaps on each pedal and charge. The other side of the charging cord connects to the power outlet via USB connectors and a mini USB on the other side. The magnetic connectors on the Asioma is pretty strong and makes connecting to charge easy. It's actually sort of fun and satisfying to do. You know, it's all about these little things. Same thing with Wahoo Powerlink pedals. They use these clips that connect to a USB-C cable to charge the Powerlink charger are easy to attach to the pedals but not as snappy and satisfying as the Asioma ones. When fully charged, the Asioma Favero will give you 50 hours of riding time, where the Wahoo Powerlink pedals will give you 75 hours. So you will get a lot of riding out of both pedals before having to recharge them, but the Wahoo Powerlink pedals will give you 
25 hours more riding time. So that's 50% more riding with the PowerLink uh, pedals than Asioma. Both the Asioma and Wahoo broadcast in ANT Plus and Bluetooth, so you can easily pair them to any compatible by computer from Garmin or Wahoo or any compatible cycling app. One connectivity advantage the Wahoo PowerLink pedals have is that they have three different Bluetooth channels. Probably not something that you will notice if you only use the pedals for riding outside, but if you ride indoors and want to capture the power data using two different apps in Bluetooth, or let's say you pair the pedals to Wahoo's app to calibrate, you won't need to worry about disconnecting from the Wahoo app before connecting to Zwift, for example. That's not going to be the case with the Asioma since it only uses one Bluetooth connection. So if you connect it to the Asioma app, you will have to remember to disconnect it from there before pairing it to a different app in Bluetooth. This is a little thing I know, but it can make a big difference in user experience and just one less thing to worry about when getting ready to ride. Let's talk about power measurement. Both pedals have two different versions, a single sided option, meaning it will only measure power from the left leg and a dual sided option, meaning it will measure power from both legs. I always recommend the dual sided to people, but if you get the single sided, just know that it's only measuring power from the left leg and multiplying that number by two. So if you try to compare that number to other power meters that measure power from both legs, those numbers might be different, especially if your right leg is a lot stronger or a lot weaker than the left leg. Both power meters measure power within 1% accuracy. Both of them have auto zero offset. Both have temperature compensation. Both measure lift, right, power balance, and both of them measure and broadcast cadence. Like I said earlier, both pedals have been very solid for me and consistent in power measurement. They just work. The main difference between the two is what they measure and the data they broadcast. So let's talk about that. The Favero Asioma measure additional power cycling dynamic uh, data like torque effectiveness and pedal smoothness. This data allows you to geek out over your pedaling technique. Now, I have been training with power for over 10 years and had access to this type of data for I think the past three or four years. Not a single time I looked at this data to analyze my riding. I looked at it because I know it's there, but did I make any decisions based off of my torque effectiveness? No, but it's there. You'll have to have a compatible device or a software to be able to see analyze and interpret this data. Wahoo Power Link pedals only measure and broadcast lift right power uh, balance data alongside your total power and cadence. I am sure Wahoo will continue to update the pedals via firmware to measure additional cycling dynamic data at some point and my hunch says uh, it will be only compatible with Wahoo's by computers. Both Asioma and Wahoo offer an app to perform firmware updates, set crank length, perform zero offset and convert a dual power meter pedal into a single sided pedal if you for some reason want to do that. Uh, the Favero app offers additional settings such as travel mode to prevent the pedals from draining battery during travels the ability to customize auto power off time and the ability to change the scale factor if you ever need to do that. So let's talk about price. The Favero Asioma dual sided costs $759 and the single sided pedals cost $495 US dollars. Also, if you decide to upgrade in the future from the single sided to the dual sided, you can purchase the right side pedal for 485 US dollars. The Wahoo PowerLink pedals dual sided power meter retails for $1,000. The single sided power meter pedal costs $650. As of this video, there is no option to upgrade from uh, single to dual if you decide to upgrade in the future, but I'm sure this will appear on their website in the near future. Okay, both pedals are very good. Power measurement accuracy in both are solid and you can rely on either one. Both are well built and I have no doubt that they will last you many years and many hours of riding. When making a decision about which one to buy, I think it comes down to which ecosystem you want to be in. The PowerLink pedals are part of Wahoo's ecosystem and they are speed play. So you will have better integration with Wahoo's product and we all know Wahoo is big on keeping their customers in their ecosystem. So for example, that last smart bike trainer from Wahoo, the roller, works well with the PowerLink pedals. It's not that it doesn't work as good with other power meters. 
it actually does. It just Wahoo is offering a discounted bundle if you decide to purchase both. Also, Wahoo is known for constantly updating their products and releasing updates. And I am sure we will see certain updates and features added in the future to the PowerLink pedals that are specific to Wahoo's bike computers, like possibly cycling dynamics. But if you want Shimano or Kyo type pedals, then the Asioma is a very good option and what I would recommend in the ecosystem. If you do not care, then it probably comes down to price. The Asioma pedals are a few hundred dollars cheaper. And if you decide to go with the single sided today, you can always upgrade if you choose to in the future. Okay, there you have it. Let me know what you think. And uh, if you are considering a power meter, which one would you go with? Hope you find this video helpful. And if you did, please hit that like button. It helps the channel and the video quite a bit. And if you are still watching and have not subscribed yet, then you know what to do. Thank you for watching and see you guys in the next video.